welcome to Curio City. Oh, is that how it's pronounced? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I think it's Curiosity. Yeah. yeah I'm you not know, sure. it is Curiosity though. Curio City. Yeah. If you just chugged your morning coffee and know the jitters will be in full effect by the end of this episode, it is time to switch cuties. Blossom oat milk lattes are a delicious way to get the energy and focus you want from your coffee without the jitters and the crash. So get 20% off your latte mix at drinkblossom.com with code CURIOCITY. That's drinkblossom.com, code CURIOCITY. Now, on to the episode. That was kind of the initial like vibe was curiosity, but then we just had to like be awkwardly enunciating city. Yeah, it is. So right. It's, it's just the world of curiosity. So yeah, that makes yeah. sense. And curios yeah. are like things that are mm-hmm. curious objects. Yes. So it's like it's. I did have to look that up. I was like, "What is curio by itself?" Because I wanted to make sure it was like nothing. Yeah. <laughs> it was like but a no. weird sexual act <laughs> yeah exactly i'm like whatever maybe they'll draw some interesting characters to the uh-huh. show you mm-hmm. never know so yeah today i want to talk to you like obviously about your music and i want to talk to you about uh like family things and your kind of your spiritual evolution cool. if okay. you will so so um i have it in my notes i have like heavy hitters so i'm like gonna start with the heavy <laughs> hitters and <laughs> we'll like m- move up okay. from there I like that. Okay. okay so um obviously like we've known about your a, a bit of your spiritual evolution i guess if you will just mm. from like online um but i've actually never heard it obviously from you and your your take mm. and adam was like we do our sleuthing, you know, before we have yeah. people on the pod. And he's like, does she even, does she have any episodes or like podcast interviews where she's talking about it? And have you done a any? Few. Okay. Not a ton. Okay. I've been kind of like, um, not private about it, but not out there on the circuit about it. I've either. noticed. I even noticed that like all, like along the way, right? Like, I think I first came across you and like your music and just who you are several years ago. I think when we even first started the podcast when it was like deconstruct Mm -hmm. and and even then i was like i can tell something's going on here Mm -hmm. and like there's she's like shifting from what she was yeah but it wasn't like you couldn't find it anywhere it was just like you personally were shifting yeah you know what i mean so Mm -hmm. do you want to kind of go into that even though you said oh yeah i don't mind mind. (laughs) and like kind of your background of like um being in worship and kind of you know where you are now yeah. Um, well, I think I've been non, I think I've not chosen to go on the route of like the deconstruction circuit mm-hmm. only because I learned from being on the professional Christian circuit <laughs> that um, having your whole inner life on display can be incredibly unhealthy. And for me, mm-hmm. it mm-hmm. wasn't a healthy thing. I didn't have a healthy relationship to that type of um, public expression mm-hmm. for a period. Yeah. And let's keep in mind, like, I was leading worship and being a Christian artist full time. So going through the type of shift I was going through was incredibly dangerous for my living. Right. So while I am a person who is, like, very committed to authenticity and vulnerability and all those keywords, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. um, I also felt that I wasn't really sure where I was going to land. So I was like, I don't really want to start advertising what I'm doing before I know what it's going to mean. You know, I might end up a Christian and just a liberal Christian or, you know, in a progressive space. Mm -hmm. And that's not really what happened in my case. But once I kind of felt like I knew a little bit more about where I was going to be, then I felt a little more comfortable talking about it. It was, yeah, kind of an interesting thing to try to figure out how to navigate. Lots of respect in that because, like, I was – I was out there. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. Everybody look at it. <laughs> yeah. it was quite I, a it. I I felt like I wanted to do that. And I did do, look, there were things that I did where I sometimes would put a feeler out and try yeah. to figure out like what, you know. Yeah. Like take the temperature of the yeah. room. Like, is everybody noticing what's going on? Yeah. yeah. And people had questions. I got questions all the time from people mm. about it. And we're like, what, what, where are you at? Like you seem, you know, there's like. It's a fun thing to go on Reddit and search your own name. <laughs> oh, no. Um, oh, no. Oh, I've never Reddit. done that. That's like almost as bad as 4chan. Uh, it's, I know, but it's also <laughs> really informative. And I found that people were talking like, what is going on? She like drank the woke leftist Kool-Aid oh, and now gosh. I think she's an atheist. And, you know, I'm like, well, I mean, all of that did happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
I did drink the local leftist Kool-Aid for whatever. I don't, that's not what I would call it, but that's right. what they were calling sure. it. I did sure. drink that Kool-Aid of the social, social justice culture. Yeah. I did have a lot of awakening because of that. Right. Actually, because I had been living a very bubble privileged type right. of life. Um, and I needed to wake up from that. And then I also found that that part of the world where I was experiencing, you know, this like awakening was mm. full of, um, ideological purity thinking. Right. And I just couldn't really quite um, figure out my place in that landscape either. Yeah. And that was where I thought I could stay a Christian and be here. Mm. And then mm -hmm. I don't know, it didn't work for me. Yeah. Um, which I know is incredibly individualistic and everything, but that's just where I'm at. So anyway, yeah, it was an interesting thing to try to figure out how to go through in public um, a private change and yeah. Something that was so tied to my living. Right. I think for us too, that like, so when we were on the road, we actually saw a lot of like on the stage, it was hellfire and brimstone. And then backstage, it was debates about Richard Rohr. Right. And I feel like <laughs> that kind of led to your push specifically to get public with it because you're yeah, like, I was like hypocrites. You're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, couldn't well, stand it. I feel like the hypocrisy of it was the part that That's forced you out. You're like, like, I, I could be just like them and mm -hmm. I would survive. I could mm -hmm. be back here. I could say what I, I need to say on stage. I felt the same temptation, you know, yeah. like, hmm. But there, it was very quickly distasteful to me. I just don't appreciate specifically in the area of spirituality, like a performative attitude. Mm. It's yeah. one thing. Artistry can be so performative, and I'm all about yeah, that. If you want right. to be a character as an artist, awesome. Right. But if you're also, if your character is preaching to people about things that you don't practice. Right. Then to me, that's like, it's not something I feel comfortable with. Right. Yeah. You know. Well, that's especially, awesome. I think yeah. like your music is still really impactful it still feels very like profound in a lot of the 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 things that you're writing and i feel like at least now though you get to invite them into something um authentically you get to be honest about it it's mm -hmm. like when you're doing christian music there's kind of this suspension of disbelief you're like mm -hmm. i'm not doing this thing that's leading you into this group mentality that's making you just kind of like rock right. and sway with the music no, and get into this trance such a weird thing to reckon with yeah, you know? when you're coupling it with spirituality in right. that kind of way, when right. there's that kind of leverage that you have, mm -hmm. and so now I feel like I I, yeah. I get similar I get similar tones and notes of like the feeling that it invoked that I don't see people come out the other mm -hmm. side of Christianity mm -hmm. very often. Well, that's with. interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. Like how has it like that. affected your creativity? Like that the journey, the evolution oh, that oh. you kind of went through. Has, oh. Did it affect your creativity? Yes. I mean, <laughs> I feel like I spent a few years in paralysis of just like, I do not know what to write. I don't know mm -hmm. how to write. I don't know what to say. I don't know why I'm doing it. I yeah. don't know because not only did like leaving the church really kind of decimate my community life yeah yep. and my a lot of my friendships mm -hmm. were changed and altered or just gone right um my creative community was also that so mm. like that was who i was writing with that was who i was touring with that was yes. who i was playing songs with and that was gone yeah and then the pandemic also happened mm -hmm. right after i had kind of made a final decision to leave okay christianity behind so that meant all the touring went away yeah and I was just like, it's just me yeah. in my house. And I don't know if I know why I'm doing this or right. if I really want to do it yeah. or if I should do it or whatever. And I'm, and in the void of like a deity to specifically call me to something, mm. you know, in that kind of one-to-one -one way, right. I just was like, well, so it's about what I want. Right. I don't know what I want. I've yeah. never, ever <laughs> asked myself that question, you know? Yep. Uh, not really at a deep level. Right. And so, yeah, it, I feel like up until very, even really recently, I've just felt like um, a little shook, <laughs> a little shook, as they say. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I think we, we've kind of talked about that. Like, it's almost easier to have like this higher purpose and just like, kind of numb out for any other like sideline yeah. choice, whether it's yeah. like even creative, like creativity. It's like even that. I know for me got kind of pushed to the side because I was in within the realms and the boxes of the mission of, right. you know, the Christian music or whatever I was doing. It's like when that, when those, I don't know, the, the parameters kind of get blown out. It's very hard to ask yourself after so many years of doing that. What is it that I actually want to create? Like, what is it that I actually want to, like not even just stand for because that's like that's a whole other thing but just like on the creative side it's right. 
even that is like a whole mind fuck and like it is. identity crisis. It really is. I mean, I was so surprised by the crisis of it that, yeah. it that it caused for me creatively because I thought, well, he just writes songs about life. Well, yeah. that's true. But when you've been serving a higher purpose your whole life in your mind. Right. And also the Christian world is sort of predisposed to like and support you. Right. Because of what you stand for. Right. Right you don't have to do the same type of work right. that other artists have to do. And that is not something that I was ready to face, I think, when I yep. realized, like, had I <laughs> been out here in the wide world, I would have never probably fucking made it. Yeah. Because I was not hardworking enough. I was not dedicated enough. Mm. I had it easy. I'm going to be honest. I mean, I worked hard. Yeah. But, like, Christian Christian music is just not the same as the rest of the industry. Right. And in that not. people are like, yes, a representative. Like, we're going to support you. We're going to buy tickets even if we can't come. How can right. we donate to your ministry? Yeah, they're like, this that is my tithe money. That is not how it is out here. Right. <laughs> at all. You know, and I'm like. Nobody's tithing to your music. No, now. no, 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 no. It's so different. And um, it was just the ego wake up call I needed. It really, yeah. It um, really is. But it also paralyzed me. I was like, well, what the fuck do I do? So, yeah. Yeah, it's been interesting. Well, <laughs> it's been you're, interesting. you're making new music now. Mm -hmm. Kind of like fast forward and it's yeah. like you were making music you've been putting out things like kind of over the years yeah but i do feel like your latest stuff is feels very true to you mm -hmm. you feel pretty like confident i it just comes across like you're having fun mm, with it that's cool i'm glad to hear that so I yeah am, you i mean know, it looks like you are in the midst of all of the <laughs> all, all the identity hair. crisis <laughs> it's all happening at once but yes i am having a good time and i think i've been really intentional well actually i take that back I'm developing an intention mm -hmm. after having backed my way into a couple things that I was okay. like, oh, that feels really, that feels really good. Yeah. To like use humor to market what I'm doing. Totally. Yeah. I am so sick of taking it all so seriously. Uh -huh. And my songs are still very earnest because right. that's the type of person I am. But yep. I'm like, I, on the other hand, as a person, am like, I, I'm, I don't spend a lot of time in like deep heart yeah. sincere yeah. conversation. And when I do, I do. But I love to joke around and I like yes. most of the time being silly. So I feel like I've never displayed that part of me. I've only displayed the facet of myself. That's like this. Sort like of you felt like all the promo had to be like match yeah. all the like. Yeah. And lyric. I don't think that I don't think that anymore. I and love so. that you do, you're doing that. It feels so much more <laughs> like for me. That's like the, I, I really relate to that notion because I even with this the podcast, I feel like there are sometimes in some conversations and in real life that just like go really deep and I want to go there. I'm, I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm all about that. I got like the deep waters or whatever it was like award when I was in eighth grade. Like I can yeah. go there, but it's been a bit, it's been like a practice for me in my life to actually play as well and let loose and just be like free and have fun mm -hmm. and whatever. So that's been like almost like a discipline to kind yeah. of implement that as well. And even like in conversations, it's like, that's why I was telling Adam, I was like, that's why, swearing has become such a really important aspect of my life because <laughs> I can just like, we can go deep. We can like have our serious talks and then I can just say, well, you know, shit happens or like, anyway, whatever yeah, yeah, the yeah. fuck, let's move on. You know, just like mm -hmm. just saying something that kind of relieves the tension. And I feel like that's kind of what you like are doing with your music. It's like, re <laughs> it's, it's really like releasing that tension that like people are like, yeah, that's some serious shit, but Oh, she's a human. I okay. That's good. So. It's also been, like really interesting because I've lost so many followers from doing that. Yeah. But I l I'm welcoming it. I feel like it's the right purge. It's like, yeah, people who can't handle me posting the clip from space balls that we used <laughs> for how about you? Cause the first yeah. line is I've been coming out of hiding for a minute now. Yeah. And we use the, the, the footage of that alien, alien busting out of that out. guy's chest. <laughs> and when we tried it, we just died laughing. I was like, that is so, so <laughs> funny to me and so i put it up and i mean hundreds of people just jump ship immediately really I thought, you know what if wow. you literally can't handle that a fine because i don't i'm not here to shock people who don't want to be shocked by something sure b like we probably wouldn't get along at a party so like let's just <laughs> let's just part nip it in the bud yeah Lo all love to you right. i actually doesn't yeah. bother me i sort of feel like it's what i'm doing is putting a divining rod out like in the sense that I'm, I'm sort of like, here's who I am. 
and whoever stays stays mm-hmm. and whoever goes goes and that's just like the way it should be i love and that well. yeah i i completely agree so then like okay what did inspire you have a new song hbu is that is that how you yeah. say it or is how that about, how about you? you yeah okay. Just so calling it like typing it. It's cute. <laughs> I like I like the marketing. Mm. So that's just one of the singles that you've been that you've released. What has inspired your latest music? Um, well, I mean, obviously, it's still pretty confessional. If anybody's heard it, it's mm-hmm. like it's still very honest and confessional. Meaning, I'm reading journal style type of writing mm-hmm. about my evolution. Right. But this particular song, "How About You," which mm-hmm. is one of my all time kind of I hate to even say favorites, sort of like cliche to say it, but it's just yeah. like a dear song to me. Yeah. Partially because when I started it, I was um, literally sitting there thinking like all these people that I perceive are out there yeah, ready to be offended and horrified right. by me and what I'm going through and how my changes. What would I say to them if they were sitting here with me? What would I literally say? Right. And so the song was that. Mm-hmm. And I just one thing that has really um been a gift i guess the last few years to me is that i've my attempt my um attitude towards the people who think i've lost my effing mind Mm -hmm. and who write me on youtube and say all kinds of weird things and hard hard things i really have like felt a softening in my energy towards them yeah because i'm like i get that Mm -hmm. i do i've Mm -hmm. been there i've been that person i was a i was a kid in high school who went into chat rooms and wrote like told atheists all kinds of things oh Uh, i have too oh yeah yeah. we know we're not better we're just better (laughs) off (laughs) that kind of stuff yeah then they just eviscerate me and i just leave and i'm like did the work did the lord's work yeah right right mission accomplished felt good even didn't grow into a tree today yeah i know and like i've been that person right before because i did grow up with the internet and so i think anyway putting this song out felt like an act of love even if those people won't like it or care about it but the chorus talks about it just says like life plays hard it's true i'm feeling it too just wait for sunrise we'll make it through which is a very simple set of words but for me they come from a very deep place of saying like i'm looking at you and you're so angry at me and i you know what if you need to be angry at me okay right like, life is crazy and you're out here trying to just feel safe feel secure feel happy just like i am and if like i'm the scapegoat then so be it you right know? and it felt special to put that out yeah i feel like that's one thing that we really got or at least that i really got once i disconnected from Christianity mm-hmm. was like I once I got some distance I could look at back at it as if it's any other religion mm-hmm. I'd be yeah. like oh I love that I love that for you that that brings you so much confidence mm-hmm. so that brings you so much like stillness for you and that brings you mm-hmm. like ease that that you feel that way yeah. that's great I mean sometimes it's difficult to hear people say awful things whether it's just like in response yeah. to things that we say on the podcast or stuff you're writing that's actually really vulnerable for you right. mm-hmm. but it's like there's almost there's a, almost a way to be more objective about it once you can kind of yeah. get past it. Yeah, some time and space go between you and the thing and right. you're able to get perspective. Where mm. like when you're in the middle of leaving, it's like leaving an abusive marriage. Right. You're like, I can't see anything good here. But then even in those types of situations, I think a lot of times retrospect shows you the mixed bag that it all was. Right. And that has definitely been the case for me with religion. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like it's given me my relationships back with like my family and like parents who like obviously they're not Mm. obviously, but they are still very much like Christian with their religion. And like it's given me the ability to kind of just have those relationships back, which Mm. I'm thankful for in that time and space. Like it gave me that um and like you have a diverse background too like you're um you said you're half syrian half american european yeah right okay yeah there's some like native american turkish thrown in there on my mom's side too but cool mostly white um, european type of bloodlines that's cool that's cool has that like shown up in your creativity at all or um yeah yeah like how has that like kind of affected your music (sighs) well you know one thing that i not to I not till recently did I really notice this but I'm kind of like in promoting this new music I'm having to pitch it to people and I'm like they're like well, what genre is it I'm like well it's like little of this little of that it's yeah like this meets that meets this sort of like an in-between type of thing which is definitely the way my life has been culturally uh-huh. um so I think it's there in a less overt way but yeah. also um you know 
I haven't released any of these things yet, but I've been bringing in a little bit more of the Middle Eastern influence cool. that I grew up. I grew up listening to Arabic music a lot, cool, and yeah. I had a lot of Arabic culture in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, truly, a sort of mixed race experience, or I mm. wouldn't even say race because people are all over the map about what Arabs race is. Yeah, yeah. But, sure. sure. And I don't know, but mixed I, culture. Race is all, <laughs> Sort yeah. of not real anyway, but it's also yeah. the system we live in. So <laughs> I don't know. Trust but me. Ethnic, yeah. I know, an ethnically understand. mixed um, background in terms of like not just my bloodline, but my experience. Yeah, and of so, course, of course. Um, I am bringing that in a little bit more. Yeah. Into the newer stuff. Somewhere. Love that. Exciting. That's exciting. Very cool. Yeah. I love that. That's it's interesting when I started recognizing how the nuance that I kept trying to have in like so many conversations and like so just the way I like saw the world when I when I started realizing that a lot of that had to do with like my mixed experience of being like native and white Mm -hmm. and just all the different things that my family entails I was like oh that checks out like it actually Mm -hmm. it actually does seep through even if not everything I do is like indigenous or whatever Mm -hmm. it's like my mixed person's experience is like the lenses that I see through. And that in and of itself speaks of the culture I specifically like grew up in. Yeah. And I feel like that's cool that like you're, you're starting to implement things, but even still, even if you weren't implementing, you're still you like, it's still your mixed person's experience. Yeah. I almost, I think that my, I mean, I'm an Enneagram nine for anybody who Mm. cares about that. Mm -hmm. So I already lean towards seeing all sides, but I think Mm -hmm. being a person of a mixed cultural background, I really do. I'm like, Oh yeah, I can see it this way. See that way. And so, yeah, even if I wasn't trying, I think it just shows up in the ways that, you know, being in a mixed culture household requires you to see things from multiple perspectives and learn how to almost like code switching, you know, yeah. where you're like, mm-hmm. I'm with my Middle Eastern family, so I'm talking about these things in this way, and I don't say this, and I don't do that. You know, there's right, certain, yeah. like, um, conversational practices that are not acceptable. Like, for example, you know, Arabs talk, all, at least in my experience, is that we, we talk at the same time as everybody. You're just yeah. talking at, over each other all <laughs> yeah. the time in yeah. excitement. <laughs> and that. in a lot of places, mm-hmm. people don't like that, yeah. and they feel interrupted. <laughs> and it's like, I'm just, you know, I'm used to it, because that's how people were. Yeah in my house and my family, but not everybody appreciates it. You're that. like, I'm just trying to be familial here. I know, like, this I'm is just actually trying comfort. to tell you I'm excited yeah. about what you're saying, but you feel like I'm interrupting you, which is not what I'm trying to get across. Oh my gosh, so. I love that. Anytime <laughs> you can interrupt me, because that's what I love too. One of my, two of my dearest friends, were, are, they're so different, but we have this little like group chat and we used to, one of them moved away, but when we all lived together, one of my friends pointed out that the other <laughs> one of uh, us would like we would just interrupt each other all the time like yeah just talking on top of one another and my friend Zamaria she and I would do that and she's Mexican uh-huh and so we would just go back and forth back and forth and my friend Kelsey who's white <laughs> she was like she's like aren't you like stressed or like does it offend you that like you know you get interrupted and I was like I have not ever once noticed that like e- <laughs> either she interrupts me or I interrupt her like yeah. I've never once noticed that and I was like that's probably why I feel like she and I can talk for hours because it's just a constant like nobody gets to finish a sentence and so we're just excited on to the next yeah. and it makes me feel like you're interested in my conversation I'm like if you give me too much of a like break in between I'll be like um anyway yeah yeah so it's like it's helpful i feel you i i've learned that it's just person to person yeah it is and so i've i've learned to be i think a quote-unquote better listener in Mm. that way meaning what does this person feel like listening needs to them right because that's what you want to give right yeah i've definitely grew up in a family where it was like everybody's just talking at the same time yeah (laughs) yeah yeah there it is i love it well okay so last thing kind of about your music i mean we can come back to it too but if you had like a message and overall experience that you wanted your listeners to have, mm-hmm. what would it be? Ooh. <clears throat> or I like a, like a takeaway. I to my team about this. Before yeah, I'm no. <laughs> Say whatever you want. I mean, me. you can add um, back. I am the team. Yeah. <laughs> it's self-dialogue. Yeah, I, man, I really, so one thing that I've always really done in my work or tried to do ever since I was an independent artist anyway, which started in 2013, mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> is I've really tried to create like soundtracks for people's mm. lives in kind of immersive ways that have, um, if you put your headphones in that you can really get lost in the, 
spaces that develop throughout the song yeah. sonically. Um, because I really like to feel immersed and saturated in sound and kind of soak in things. Mm-hmm. And so that, as whatever the message is, as far as the lyrics and the themes, one thing that's never changed is that. That, right. I, that yeah. I try to make something people can really I think that's what I was feeling in. in your music I was like I feel like this this gives me the same like the droning CCM thing where you're like yes. I could go through this bridge eight yes. times and we could oh, just that keep me getting better I mean I definitely look I you said something earlier about you know the um being on stage and kind of getting people what did you say? Was it like it's almost that? like into a hypnotic state. Yes. So that is something I believe is really biologically beneficial. Yeah. yeah. It's just the intersection of it with ideas that can get hairy. Yep. Mm. Whereas the practice of getting together in a room to get on a wavelength of via music is old and culture, cross-cultural. And I think biologically wise, it's sort of like it can really um, – Heal, help your nervous system out yeah. in a world where like we are so inundated with stressful messaging and screens and blue light and honking horns and people's you know anger and work and you know all the things that rob us of peace that we feel are robbing us of peace anyway and so music can be a real place to kind of leave time for a second mm-hmm. and not be concerned with any of that not be thinking about it and i think worship was that way yeah totally. and i hope that my new music is also still that way if that makes sense no totally i i feel like people have om- almost like when once you start leaving the space and you're doing christian music and you're used to being able to experience that we kind of release the intuitive relation that we have with people and we get it all heady we just get right. all about intellectual mm-hmm. conversation and we just want to talk about the like the practical things True. that we're learning and the things that we're like we're like oh no it's not about this anymore that was all right. manipulation tactics and it's like no it's manipulation because they're using something that's really good for you something that's really right. natural to try to persuade you into believing something that's not natural right and right that's the manipulation right. but i think like, so much of it is communal i agree I agree. And I think there's this phenomenon called collective effervescence. Mm -hmm. You've heard of that? Yep. For anybody out there listening who hasn't heard of that, it's it's just this phenomenon that happens when people are gathered around a sound or an idea or even like, I've heard it said, like Tupperware parties in the 80s. Yeah. (laughs) Like where (laughs) everybody's so excited that you get synced up with each other Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. your heartbeats start to sync up and your um, energies change and you feel a flow in the room that you're all kind of on the same wave yeah that is a very healing experience for me Mm -hmm. so no matter what genre i do and christian music is not a genre but you know (laughs) no matter what space i'm (laughs) occupying in the lane of music like i want to experience that with people no matter what and i have experienced that at all kinds of different shows and in all kinds of different environments i mean i was at um, have you ever heard of Hiatus Coyote? Oh my yeah. God. You got okay. to go to a Hiatus Coyote show? <sighs> yeah. I wish I, they were too I went right now. to see them at Marathon like a year and a half oh ago. And I was just like, <laughs> I went somewhere else. Yeah. yeah. Man, it was just, it blew my mind. But I wasn't even, I was paying attention, but the music just took me. I was just like sent, you know, I was like, yeah. That yep. was therapeutic. I left feeling like I had gone to the spa because I just was gone Hello. from the thinking mind yep. for a while. Mm-hmm. And that we need that kind of it's like an energetic nap. Yeah. Like That's how I feel about the that. Japanese house. If you've ever listened to them. Oh, wait, we talked about this. We I'm did. going to that show. Oh, my God. We're, go- we're going to the next show, too. We've got tickets already. Which one is that? It's at Marathon this time, so it's at oh, a bigger venue. That's, that's what, what I'm talking did. about. Yeah, I'm going to that show. I think we talked about yeah. it at my party, actually. Amazing. Yeah. Um, at my birthday party. Oh, but my yeah, God. I'm it's it's so one of those things. It's especially the old the old album stuff. It's just so like it lulls you into this thing, and then it gives you this like stab of guitar yeah. or something that just like shocks you awake for a second. I love the new stuff too. I've been obsessed with the song Boyhood since it came out. Yeah. Oh yeah, and like I sing it to myself all the time, and I'm just like the lyrics and the melody, and then the beats underneath, and it's very hypnotic stuff. Yes, uh-huh. I'm very excited for that. Show. It is. Oh yeah. yeah. When is that? Is that November? Yeah, November. it's like November eighth or yeah, 9th 8th. or something like that. I yeah. have to keep your fingers crossed because I have the kids. And I have to find a babysitter, and I'm like, I must. Oh yeah, Literally, you must. Yeah, you have, you have enough time break to figure my it heart out. If yeah. I can't, or if something <laughs> happens, I will be so sad to miss that. No, so. you won't miss it. You won't miss yeah. it. Yeah. I feel like that's just like a connection thing though. That is really that really is important. That gets skipped over once you get out of because because there is music for the belief system you have something that you can like auto connect right. to where you're just like, this is what we do. 
there's a, there's a moment in every communal gathering where you will yeah. sit down for 20 ish minutes and just zone out with each other yeah and you sort of soak in the idea of something yeah uh-huh. that you think is really beautiful and that thrills you and that brings you're you encouraged comfort. to meditate on things while you're doing it well you know it's funny like for the longest time i would feel kind of self-conscious about the fact that i would go play concerts and people would just sit down and put their heads down mm. and i'm like are they sleeping yeah. or are they soaking? <laughs> I can't totally tell. Yeah. Cause my music was very gentle in yeah. a lot of ways, even when it was big. Yeah. And so, um, but then you I calmed people's nervous systems. I think so. Yeah. And I actually really treasure that. I think regardless of what I was, and I was never like a hellfire and brimstone preacher person. Yeah. I never, ever really talked about sin. I wasn't, that wasn't anything I focused on yeah. in my, in my songs. I definitely gave a couple talks that I regret. In yeah, that, in those years <laughs> when I was yeah. like doing women's ministry and stuff. Yeah. Same. I, that's where it's toxic with the women's oh, ministry. I've been I there. regret that. Yeah, I don't have a lot same. of regrets, but I'm like, I have some regrets about that. That's same because our even our our music, like our messaging too, was very much about like living an extraordinary life. Like, yeah. you know, our last album album was called Tired of Basic, and it was like very much like live your most extraordinary life, like dream bigger, and like mm. you know all these different things. So it's like our message was always very like empowering and good yeah. it's just like yeah the random like oh. women's ministry conversations that's when things got a little yeah. taxi there's like a few videos on the internet oh no they're still there say because <laughs> they're Google still them, there but like so funny story when i met my now partner slash husband um it still feels weird to say husband but it is <laughs> um it we took me on, many we, years to say husband, yeah. actually. Uh, it's we, a I, weird I said word. partner. It's got a funny a connotation or something. I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. It sounds so 18th century or something. Yeah, um, I know. It's true. I don't know. But anyway, he and I met on Hinge, and a few weeks in, he like looks me up on YouTube. Oh, and gosh. I'm just like, oh, my God. Why would he do that? I told him <laughs> that I had made Christian music, and he knew that. Okay. Yeah. And he did not, he was not raised in. The church at all oh okay. okay so he had no context <gasps> for anything that he saw when oh gosh he looked me up and it was like me at like ihop in kansas city oh, doing like worship charismatic worship yeah and then it was like me on stage talking to catholic young girls about how i like stopped watching pornography and masturbating oh <laughs> and i was just like oh. i am cringing to my behold oh this is my so gosh. what he's like i've been on youtube for like two hours watching all this stuff like what but the he knew heck? though like who you he were knew, but he didn't pr- know okay so he had really? questions. Like I, I had mean, told him. How could you him, know if you don't know the industry? Yeah, I had told him like I did that, but I didn't elaborate. But I'm saying like, like he knew who you were. He knew you weren't that anymore. Yeah, but he was like, how did you become the you that <laughs> I know like, I need- in like five years? <laughs> I need, I need questions to know <laughs> what has happened, you know? I was like, Did let's something chat. radical happen in your life that I need to know yeah, about immediately? Let's chat. Um, so much has changed. Yeah. yeah, that kind of stuff I look back at and I think there's no way I can truly like correct it except yeah. to be where I'm at now. And even recently, like playing a couple of concerts, which I haven't done much at all. Mm. I've played like four times in the last four years, pretty much. Um, there you go get the annual concert. Yeah, kind of, you know, and the last couple of times I have a couple of people have walked up to me and said, I really appreciate you sort of. Um, I was one of those kids. Oh, wow. I was sitting there in that room listening yeah. to what you said, and I just appreciate you setting the record straight, you know, about what you believe about this stuff now because I have also changed, and it yeah. helps me. It just helps to feel like you have also kind of backed off that viewpoint that you had, which, right. of course, was that self-pleasure was sinful, and right, that right. inherent in that idea is that you should stop doing it, Yeah. and here's how I stopped, and here's how you can stop. Right, right. Yeah. And then, like, I was, I did, I went 19 years without self-pleasuring once, <gasps> which is a whole, Holy I God. know, pretty amazingly dedicated. Wow. And were you, you were, were you in relationships? Were other people yeah, taking and care I of wasn't, it? No, no. No? Oh, no. Oh, I was, no. like, the chastity queen. Oh, my I, gosh. I didn't. Nope. So you had some, you had some cobwebs. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I did. I didn't kiss anyone until I was 26. Oh, I was like very, very, very chaste. That's close to me. That's close to me. She was my first kiss, first everything. Yeah. And sex is what broke our Christianity. (laughs) Oh, really? (laughs) Yeah. That's hilarious. I did not know that. We literally were like, we started, we got married and we're trying to figure things out and we're like, 
oh, we need to redefine what sex is. Yeah. That was like the primary thing. Oh, wow, thing. that's interesting. Yeah. And when that's and the that base, and falling in love, like, there was a, there was a couple things. There were so many things. Sex, we were very role reversed. It was, it was falling in love when we weren't supposed to, and yeah. at me, like, breaking off my engagement to somebody oh, else. Like, it was a whole, like, life yeah. shift. So I, like, that was the first time I got, like, the taste of, like, public failure. Uh-huh. And I was like, ooh, that's kind of nice to, like, mess everything up and, like, have yeah. no responsibility, essentially. Like, so anyway. Yeah, people get that. up on you, and then you can live your life. Yes, you know? exactly. Yeah. So I got kind of, I honestly feel like I kind of got addicted to it. That's why, like, <laughs> my, like, approach to my deconstruction was so public, because I was like, this is actually such a good feeling to have everybody fall off and like yeah, get disappointed, and get leave. disappointed and leave. Like I, I was like, that. that's actually it's really like what you're just talking about too. You're like, it's the healthy, like, please purge. Yeah. Purge like yourself. Self-identify this and go. whole good. shenanigan I've been like in this whole scaffolding I've put up around trying to make sure yeah. everybody feels okay about me is really unhealthy and yeah. like killing me a little bit. Yeah. You know, it's not healthy. No, me. no, it's yeah. definitely not healthy. Okay. Fun question. Yeah. So you, I know you mentioned, um, you really like Celine Dion and Severance. Yeah. <laughs> Those yeah. are the two things you you mentioned that you like. That's really funny. I don't remember. I remember filling it out, but I didn't. It's just like random. <laughs> yeah. I do really love them. I do really love them. It's like a very true thing for you. Yeah. Okay, so does Celine Dion like? Obviously, she's a musician. She's an artist. She is a queen. So, like, s- did she have any um, influence over you in your music, I or mean, just like as a human being? Oh, that's hard to say. I, I don't know if I hear any influence from her, but. Um, she was more like my, in the absence of having like a cool aunt Uh that I could talk to about anything. Yeah. She was no offense to my aunts. I love them, but I just didn't talk to them (laughs) about, I didn't talk to them about my feelings about stuff. It wasn't really our relationship. And I felt like I would go in my room and put on her music Aww. and like feel my feelings to it. No, you can't not feel your feelings to Celine Dion. I know. Just and the I way she sings too. You're just like, you want to scream insane. it She's out. so corny, but like she's so sincere. Yeah. That it works for me. Yeah. And like, I, I just have always loved her personality. I've always loved her generosity. I think she's a yeah. really kind person, but her singing is, Corny as it, it may ever be, the tracks, the songs, they're all so cheesy pretty much. Not all of them, but pretty much all of them. Yeah. But her voice and her powerful singing is so moving to me. And mm-hmm. also, She's when committed. I was, oh my gosh. And when I was a kid, I would hear, so like, you probably understand this being musicians. My parents looked at me like I was crazy when I would say this, but I would be listening to her and I'm hearing all these harmonics in her voice mm-hmm. because she has like this crazy harmonics that I would hear like octaves and fifths and things inside her singing. And I'd be like, Mom, it's like she's singing three notes at once. Like, I can hear this note and this note and this note. She's like, I don't know. What are you talking yeah. about? You know? Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know. I just I have an incredibly sensorily rich experience yeah. of yeah. her voice for some reason. The I way feel like that's resonates. like a good ballad singer has yes. that timbre, yes. has that like Ugh. element. And it just would make me, it was cathartic mm-hmm. to listen to. But there was this one particular song called If You Can See Me Now. Yes. Is, oh. Yes. It's a deep I, cut. Most I know the one. Most people know that one. Mm-hmm. Yep. And whenever I would feel like, um, unrequited love type of feeling. Yeah. I would like listen to that and just cry. Oh, and wow. uh, at 13, you know, yeah. in my Lion King t-shirt. But I just, <laughs> yeah, I really found a lot of catharsis in her work for some reason as a young person. So it's just really special to me still. Yeah. yeah. Oh my and gosh, I, think she's I love it. underrated in terms of her contribution to like pop culture. Agreed. Because she just... I mean, there's so many good singers out there from her era. Yeah. And she true. deserves her place in the pantheon, in my opinion. And I don't think a lot of people appreciate her because of her corny songs. But right. I'm like, but her singing, though, is her so s- powerful. Her singing. She's an amazing communicator. I know. You know? It's like so. her voice is its own storyteller. Yes. Like, it doesn't have to be, um, I guess, anything as maybe, um, how do I put it, like, Adele seems more like she is she's talking about herself. Mm-hmm. Celine's singing songs written by all kinds of people about yes, all kinds of topics. I completely agree. So that's a difference. Yeah. But like even so, it's yeah. just so healing to listen to her. I yeah. just love her voice so much. It washes over me. I'm like, whew. Yes. So yeah, I'm, I'm big big Celine Dion fan. I actually have another interview that I'm doing. I haven't been doing very many interviews till like the past couple of weeks all of a sudden. And I have another one that I'm doing. Um, and he was like, can we do an episode about Celine Dion? So we're actually going <laughs> to hit up the pop culture. Oh, fun, podcast. fun. Incredible. Okay. So we're going to dive deep. So oh. that's reminding me. I'm like, I need to go like refresh my. Is it? Is he in Nashville? No. Oh, okay. Uh-uh. 
I forget where he is, but um, we're recording remotely. Very oh, okay. cool. I'm okay, excited. I love the pop culture stuff. That's like an element I definitely want to bring into yeah. the podcast. But so far, it's like we're just like barely inching that way. But anyway, that's why I bring that up too. Like yeah. you, you, you mentioned it in your bios, like Celine Dion, <laughs> and then a severance. I can't imagine how that kind of um, inspires you in your music. But uh, you know, I don't. Know it could that it does either. But I love great television, and I love I like great movies too. But yeah. I love great television. I, I've become such a TV person mm-hmm. in the sense that I don't watch that much of it, but I am very into whatever shows I'm into at the time. Yeah. And Severance was one that I watched. Uh, have you guys seen it? Have you? I've started it. I know what the big reveal okay. is at the you end. Do. I was told it so that I could be encouraged to watch it. Okay. Yeah. I definitely, of course, would encourage you to watch it because I'm a huge fan. Yeah. Um, but it was kind of, and I won't give the way I give away the reveal to anybody, you know, who's listening who hasn't <laughs> yeah. seen it. But um, it, I think, uniquely for me, um, it's it's like it's cool when stories don't overtly talk about something, but mm-hmm. then they inadvertently or maybe mm-hmm. implicitly like shed light on a feeling we all have about something. I like that. For yeah. Me, corporate culture is so kind of on blast in this show. Okay. Yeah. Um, in a sort of sneaky way. Uh-huh. And um, I, that's all I'll say, but the acting, the cinematography, the music for me, the actually the intro sequence is the only intro sequence I never skip. Oh, wow. Actually, I'll take that back. There's two. Okay, so what's that the other one? one? Just gets you right in the right That mood. one and Snowfall, which, have you seen that show? I haven't. No. Oh, I don't I'm even know what that is. i Snowfall fan, too. Okay. It's about the, it's a sort of docu show. It's not, a, like it's shot show. like a, dra- a drama, uh-huh. but it's a documentary type of. The way it's shot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, for, uh, well, not so much. Sorry, I'm, I'm not doing a good job of explaining it, but the CIA in the 80s, like, participated in the crack cocaine epidemic in yeah, LA. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so this is a show about that. Okay. It's hard to watch. But, like, Breaking Bad type of hard to watch. Okay, yeah. yeah. But, um, man, the show and the finale is one of the only finales that has truly not disappointed me. I actually was, wow. and it wasn't because it was so big and flashy. It wasn't. It felt real. Okay. It felt like a real ending. Yeah. I was like, that feels like that You really actually happened. had closure. I feel like that really yeah. happened. Yeah. And I just felt like, okay, it buttoned it up for me. I yep. feel so satisfied. <laughs> oh, that's so nice. I got so invested in the character. So for the finale to get to the you know point where I was like, wow, I feel like I saw what really happened to them. Yeah. Um, I was really moved. And uh, the intro sequence to that is very short. And it changes. And every episode is different. It evolves. Oh, oh interesting. <laughs> It shows you a different, the episode or whatever. Yeah, it just shows you like a different – so like it'll start in like a pinpoint of something mm. and then eventually by the end of the season you see the whole picture. Oh. And it's so – it goes along with the story. Mm-hmm. I just thought it was so creative. Interesting. That I is. I really love that show. That's like us with uh, Sex Education. Not that it's I a love that show story too. about a true story. I haven't watched but the new season yet. We, oh. we just barely started it. I love that show. We love that show. Yeah. It's I, so good. I have like – I, I want to watch more of like the style you're describing and I think I, I like could. It's just – <laughs> I she's a sensey girl. I'm like, I get it. I'm so I sensitive. Too, actually, so okay. it's like I have to. If just, you could take it, maybe I. Well, could you take know it. what it is. I think what's happened is that I, I am really sensitive, and in the past I would sort of avoid all things like that, and yeah. then I realized that by exposing myself to them, I could like develop some resilience. You're yeah. like a little desensitized. Maybe I should do that. That's basically I'm what happened. So I was sensitive. like, you know what? I'm just gonna try to see if I can push through because. I do feel everything really intensely yeah. and for the characters yeah. and about the story and about my own life and whatever comes up because of the show. It's yeah. Like, could yeah. derail me, you know? Yeah, um, for sure. <laughs> movies can do that. Like, have you seen High Life by chance? I probably, no, um, no. It's a sort of a, it's I don't not see exactly a horror movie or anything. Okay. It's just a, an intense psychological <laughs> okay. thriller type okay. of movie about like death row prisoners who get sent to space on a suicide mission. Oh, dark stuff Shit. like robert pattinson is in it and juliette binoche and andre oh, wow. 3000 from outcast oh, wow. and it's you an incredible that. movie yeah. but at the end of it i was just oh, oh no you were wrecked um oh, isn't it i was like in the bathroom at the bell court weeping out loud oh no like i'm like this is nope. so embarrassing <laughs> I, but i can't control it and so that's i definitely relate yeah but it's like as the more that i have like exposed myself to things that are that way it's like Help me learn some lessons. So okay. I'm not maybe, saying that you should. Maybe do that. you're prescribing some for me. Is what maybe, you're saying? but I, not necessarily. Yeah. I'm, you know, that's up to you. Yeah. I just know that for me, <laughs> it's been helpful to just try. Breaking Bad was the first show that I ever took on that had yeah. some sort of intense themes that I was scared to 
go through. But sure. by the time I got to the end, I was like, that was worth it. It yeah. was hard, yeah. but it was worth it. I felt like I learned some things. They I were felt telling like a visceral story. Yeah. yeah. So you kind of had yeah. to feel it to be able to understand. <coughs> well, that. I've, also, yeah. I've also realized, like, I just can't, like, it has to, I have to set the scene, like, uh-huh. like environmentally as well. I can't really do movie theaters. Okay. So it's like a sensory overload for me. So it's like if I'm going to already be like 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 on a sensory overload from like the emotion yeah. or the like the visual of it, the sound, all of that, like Fair I'm going to have to be home and Fair the enough. screen is going to have to be a certain amount you away from pause me. It every I need to pause minutes. to get like a snack, like yeah. you know what I mean? Like I and maybe that's not part of my desensitizing program that's that okay. you're coming up for me. No, I think <laughs> dude, there's no there's no right way to do anything. You know what I'm saying? If that's the way you do it, that's the way you but do it. But I would it. love to like be a part of like these conversations and like culturally and like know all th- because in my head, like I all these stories are so fascinating to me. I love having like the underlying like message that like, you know, it comes out at the very end. You're like, oh this whole time it's been about whatever. I'm yeah. like I love that. And I could read about it all day long, but it's like the sensory That's of fair. like fair. watching. But I, so, I I, so I want to, so I just have to like well, you know, work my way there. Don't push yourself too hard. Yeah. I just <laughs> want to circle back to community a little bit because you talked about how like your exodus from the Christian music industry and also just from Christianity in general kind of left you outside of your community that you had before. Yeah. And I'm curious as you like redeveloped your partner, your, your relationship with your partner who you also were like, I'm already past all the things that I had to do to evolve. Yeah. Like, we evolved within our relationship, so yeah. there was a lot that we had yeah. to combat there. But, like, do you have specific ways now that you like to relate to your community, like build friends that that is different than you would have done when you were doing it through your music or through mm. your church environment? Yeah. That's such a good question. Let me think for, like, five seconds. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, yeah for, luckily for us, we've just been super fortunate because we're, <laughs> like, we literally have been in the journey together and we're both, like, Oh yeah, I can see that perspective. Let me let me take a, a not, look down that road too. Not only together, but also like I've been mentioning, like it's just everyone's kind of known where I've been at. Like yeah, yeah. and, and you've been such a great leader in our relationship too, in really like researching, doing your thing, presenting yeah. me with some points that you have, and like <laughs> I'm an enneagram five. <laughs> ah, nice. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and what are you? I am a. I think I'm a one, but okay. I haven't really done enough okay. research to 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 okay, figure that out specifically. That. I would s- yeah. Yeah, I would say he has a lot of two tendencies, but it's to me, it's like unhealthy. Like, um, I don't it's like he goes to two, I, I don't know who goes to two. I think it's um. I think a four does. Isn't it? I because they're trying four. to like avoid the creativity that they should be doing and they're going into some like some unhealthy s- serving outside of themselves. I, th- I think so. Anyway, so I think sometimes I think that that's what he is because I'm like, that's interesting. If anyone knows Adam or meets Adam, they're like, oh, he's the kind of sweetest and he is, but like he's a little over serving, I think, at times whenever he's like ignoring himself. I'm like, hello. And so that's why I'm like, I don't know, whatever's <laughs> unhealthy. It could too. be a nine. It could also be nine. True. Vibes. Yeah. True. That's a, that's a pitfall for me as well. Yeah. Believe it or not. I'm like the over serving to kind of numb bowing to everyone else's needs and desires and just like ignoring whatever it is I'm feeling Uh because I'm like too scared to create conflict or whatever. I know it's not always how I am, but I can tend it creeps up in there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay. So I think so. Yeah. It's so weird. So like I basically left quote unquote, there was no like grand leaving that happened. I just stopped going. Yeah. And I stopped by virtue of the pandemic, I stopped touring. Right. But I hadn't been going to mass. I was a Catholic and I hadn't been going to mass since probably 2018. Okay. And, um, at that point I, I was like, I'm pretty sure I'm done. I'm yeah. I'm sure I'm done. But I wasn't entirely certain how I was going to handle that in the public eye and everything. And then the pandemic happened and I was like, well, I mean, <laughs> can't go anywhere. Right. Can't do anything. Yeah. And can't see anybody obligated so self-reflection it was like a natural <laughs> yeah it was like a natural break in mm-hmm. a lot of things including my relationships that mm-hmm. might have been kind of founded on and like yep. mainly sustained by our shared belief and so it just sort of naturally purged my life of a lot of that kind of it was like the first things that caught fire when the pan- pandemic happened everything that was like kind of already simmering off that were kind of dying off i feel like were the first things that caught flame in the wildfire of covid because i feel like that happened for me too in a different way it was sort of i think a lot of people experienced deep disruptions to their patterns of relationship that Mm -hmm. might have been autopiloting you know autopilot type of stuff 
And like, I didn't have many friends be like, I can't be your friend anymore. Yeah. But I had a lot of friends that just sort of backed into the bushes. Like, yeah. they sort of disappeared. Uh-huh. Yep. And it especially got that way when we couldn't even hang out and see each other. Right. Then of course, there was no, and it was kind of a mercy, a severe mercy in a way, because sure. I felt like it, it really clarified for me the type of people that, you know, I wanted to have around me. And for a while, it was like all my friends were in this kind of ex evangelical meets woo woo type of yeah mm-hmm. space and then i and i have friends with a lot of those people still yeah um however i have also evolved out of that type of a yeah, community in a lot of ways because i don't think i ever truly belonged there in yeah. terms of the the practices of how that type of space is run so like for example i don't i am not a person who personally necessarily believes in like reincarnation i'm mm-hmm. i'm so open to it being a thing but i'm not like i know that mm-hmm. i've been here before mm-hmm. and i'm here to learn this and that and i can connect with my past like i've done all the travels you guys right i've done them all almost, yeah almost all of them <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i i've had those experiences and yet for me i'm like those are experiences right in my mind yep. yeah i don't put any more trust in them than i would as far as showing me the real nature of reality I'm like, I don't know the real You're nature like, of reality. That's not a power outside of me. That's a no. power within. That's the thing something that, within me yeah, uh-huh. that I want to take note of. And yeah. in, my, in that way, I revere it. Yeah. But I just don't have a lot of beliefs. And I think a lot of people in the wellness world have a lot of beliefs. Yeah. And I just don't have them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I never really did. And I think, so I sort of evolved out of that community yeah. too. Not, not, I have some dear friends that I sort of, you know brought with me on my way through yeah that world but i never felt like i found my footing in that world and so yeah i don't really have that circle of like and that you know the I new beliefs know. the new like yeah, yeah. There, they are new denominations i mean like kind as of much yeah as people are like yeah 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 you're just kind of floating out into space you land here you land there you do your thing but like that in and of itself that exploratory it's almost from what I can tell, it's almost resorting back to a lot of the Jewish practices of like you yeah. you go to the Bible and your religion is questioning the Bible. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good that's a good point. And I also feel, you know, one of the beautiful things about my experience in that world has been that they're very focused I'm I know I'm blanket statementing right now, but yeah, sure. hopefully that can be forgiven just for the sake of the conversation. But I seems like they're very focused on ritual Mm -hmm. and on marking moments Mm -hmm. in life milestones and transitions that a lot of times do get left behind in culture meaning like mothers become mothers and nobody is helping them transition into motherhood Mm -hmm. through the portal of change that that Mm. is well in the wellness circles that i occupied that's exactly what they would do is sort of circle around and help the woman birth into the mother and i think that's powerful right and i want to take that with me but what i I couldn't really square, I think, some of the beliefs that I encountered there with just how I see things. It just doesn't really line up with my own take on it. And so what's cool is I felt so scared to say any of that to anybody that I know, just like when I was a Christian. Yeah. And recently (laughs) in my life, I've been going to these friends and saying like, hey, can I talk to you? I feel so weird saying this, but I just want to, I want you to know me. So I just want you to know that I don't believe these things Mm -hmm. and I don't judge you for believing them yeah i'm so supportive of your beliefs mm-hmm. i just don't believe these things yeah and like i hope we can still be friends yeah you know? and all of them were of course like yeah of course yeah <laughs> but yeah. i just for me i was like i don't know you know and so i'm still kind of looking for what it looks like for me to have community in the sense that i understood it when i was younger but what is cool is that i have this kind of patch well you came to my birthday party you uh-huh. guys were at my 40th mm-hmm. birthday party I have so many different kinds of friends, uh-huh. like totally. so many different circles of friends. And that was my main joy from that evening was looking around at this, my house and my yard and looking at all these different kinds of people from all different walks of life, Christian, woo woo, whatever you want to call it. Um, kind of atheistic, more non-religious, non-spiritual and, you know, neighbors and relatives and just all the different people that I know. And I, I they may not be centralized, yeah, but, yeah. um, but I feel really rich in that way. Like I have a lot of amazing friends from different walks of life. And yeah. I don't know that I think that I need a central, lo- centrally located community to mm-hmm. feel. I would love that. But at the same time, I'm like, well, the cost of it is mm-hmm. that you have to share the parameters almost. a lot of ideas together. And yeah. I don't know if that, that's practical. I don't know if there's a community that lines up with how I think. And I'm not going to start yeah. one because I'm right. not going to yeah. be a cult leader. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, well, 
maybe I'm just, I think I'm a little more in touch with the chaos of the universe than maybe some totally. people, and that's okay with me. I, I tell people, that. I'm like, a, I'm an unwilling atheist. I'm like, I don't actually want to be atheist. I just don't know what to believe, and I don't <laughs> want to cling on to anything. Yeah. And I don't want to form communities. You sound like a nine, too. I yeah. Gotta be honest. I'm like, maybe you don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> be, every every number <laughs> wants to claim him too. Like yeah, everyone who is the number, I they're bet. like, oh, like you're this. Hear, you're this. Yeah. You're this. No, I love the way you described that because it's like it's it's just I don't know. It was very nice to kind of hear like even our own thoughts, things that we've like discussed back and forth. Um, just said in a different way, and I think that's a big part of what like curiosity is. Like a lot of the community of curiosity, and it's like. We're still like a, a like a growing community. It's like that where it's mm-hmm. like we have done the landing thing. Now we're kind of off the landing thing, and we're kind of like I don't know. I'm 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 curious. I'm like I'm letting the experience of like my mind can go there. The experience of like all these different beliefs. Like you kind of yeah. move through them, and that's part. And it that's what keeps you in your version of spirituality is like that moving through. Right, and that's that's true for me and that's true for Adam. And I think that's true for like, hopefully the goal is like, that's true for the like curious cuties is what I call them <laughs> for like all of curiosity and like our community. So like, I'm really yeah, grateful for how I you shared it's that. It's good to be like a sieve in life, you know, it's yeah. like you yeah. can really float in the water, let the water come in and out yeah, and not hold on to it. And right. I, I've really gotten into, I mean, I've like, I've been to so many things, but I've, I've gotten into, <clears throat> the Tao and Zen Buddhism mm-hmm. in the last few years, really learning about that, not necessarily practicing anything, but just learning mm-hmm. about right. the thoughts and the thought traditions and the history of both movements, which are sort of intertwined in some ways. Mm-hmm. And then also like more recently even meeting people from the Baha'i faith. Oh <clears throat> yeah, sure. It's so interesting. Rain Wilson what, is like one of the biggest the Baha'i? Of Baha'i. It's like I don't a, know it. It's like a mystical um sort of like adjacent to Islamic mysticism. Oh, mm-hmm. interesting. And I just bought one of the texts called, I think it's called, uh, shoot, I just bought it, so I don't remember because I haven't read yeah, it yet. Totally. Beautiful word, The Beautiful Words or okay. something. Uh, as a recommendation of someone who I also did an interview with last week on a podcast called uh, Interfaithish. Okay. And he was raised Baha'i and is half Jewish, half Arab, I believe. Okay. And he was telling me about it, and I was like, man, I see there's so many schools of thought out there. There and are. so many traditions that I don't even know anything about, and I'm so curious about all of them. Yes. Yeah. And I think I, like, live to harmonize those things. Yes. You know, totally. Synthesize them. And um, some people really believe that that's harmful because <coughs> you're sort of individually taking mm. what's meant to be a communal Sure. experience and expression and just adopting it for yourself and taking things from it and, you know all kinds of people have thoughts about that hmm. i just know i'm so curious i just want to know yeah. about all the different ways people see the You're world like, maybe i'm wrong for that but i'm just but i just i can't help it i'm yeah. sort of yeah. a like like what you said you said uh moving through right yeah Probably, moving through yeah. it yeah that's how i am and i just don't know that there's any other way i can be no yeah no i completely agree i've S- never same. been part of any community that i haven't questioned yep same yeah same that's just who i am well i think you it's know? important too like i have never really known a community like in an individual point like if you're friends with somebody that's baha'i or if you're friends with somebody that's jewish yeah. like if you adopted one of the things that they do out of like reverence for what they're yeah. doing and you're like this actually seems really cool i love its effect on so. you i think it's really helpful i don't I've never met somebody that's like offended by that and is like, I'm sorry, you can't do that. I haven't either. I mean, the only exception I would say is that I've met, yeah, I definitely have no Catholics that feel that way. Mm. But I think um, one of the interesting things about Catholicism, not all Catholics feel this way, but like I know some who do, Yeah, is that because baked into the tradition of Catholicism is this idea that the Holy Spirit has protected the Catholic Church from error mm. in its doctrines and dogmas for all of time. Impressive. I know. It's amazing. <laughs> um, <laughs> I bought that. I bought into it when I became a Catholic. And then I quickly realized, well, not quickly. A few years in, I was like, hold on a minute. You're just blind Abrupt- to your own Abruptly, faults. maybe? That <laughs> is incredibly dangerous thinking. Right whoa you know i just i couldn't I really can't believe i've never been wrong 
Well, it's like they would say, you know, of course Catholics have been wrong about things, but at the high level, yeah. church institutionally approved teachings and doctrines right. are all fundamentally protected from error. They cannot be overturned. And if you don't accept them all, you're not really practicing Catholicism. So I just was like, oh, okay. <coughs> sure. You know, and I, I went, I, I dived, dove, dived, delved, delved, delved. <laughs> so deep into Catholic teaching. I mean, I read insatiably for years on end about it. And I think I was longing to finally feel mm. like I had found the truth. Yeah, the Catholic Church had this claim and I was like, finally, oh my God, I don't have to figure it out anymore. Yeah. And then after a few years there, I was like, well, hold on. And oh no, here it goes, you know? Yeah. And then the House of Cards came tumbling down over time for me. Mm. And I think a lot of Catholics felt incredibly betrayed by that or incredibly saddened because I was a convert to the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, that was, I was, uh, I sort of made my way in Christian music as a Catholic. Right. Sure. <coughs> yeah. So that was the majority of my fan base was yeah. massively so, was Catholic. And I feel sad that I caused that or that that pain, you know, came to them but i also feel like it was a good thing because yeah people shouldn't put people on pedestals no mm -hmm. matter what right you know for sure and, they did, and i think people don't realize they're doing that until you fall from it and then true like, oh, you know how until they have you? their like heartbreak or their like anger yeah whatever like their own emotions kind of can only yeah. tell them like how high exactly. up they like kind of exactly. put you but what's so beautiful is that every so often i get a letter from someone who's like hey i was one of those people who was so upset yeah and now things have changed for me yeah and i get it and yeah i'm so grateful that you were brave, brave enough to be honest and i love those it messages all feel amazing to me i'm like it's not yeah. why i did it but that does add a layer of like reward because it is hard to publicly leave your religion as yeah. a professional within that religion. within yeah. the religion that's yeah. so funny because <laughs> we called ourselves professional christians too we're like that's just the best it's kind of what it is it. Yeah. You're getting paid to go be yourself on stage as a believer of something and express it through song. You're basically, a, you know, a performing the religion. You're performing the ideas. Right. Yeah. yeah you're you like know, the, an icon of it. Right. It's a, it's a sacrament of the religion. Yeah. yeah. It's something that you literally are paid to do and brought and uh -huh. tri you travel to do it and people just. And they give you snacks and. Yeah. We do love the snacks. I, I love, love how snacks. whenever. We were vegan when we were on the road, so we only got veggie oh, trays. It was. We were starved. Honestly, <laughs> on the road. <laughs> Christians yeah. love bacon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Which I'm not a Christian at all anymore, but I'm back to liking bacon. Oh, man. Welcome. <laughs> so yeah. Bacon is yeah, I'm back to <laughs> eating meat. How so do we feel about pancetta? I don't I don't know. Is that the, a meat? It is. See, I we're think it's one of the first things that we had because we went to France for an award uh, show that So what had, is that? Yeah. And we just ate it's all the charcuterie boards. Yum. Pancetta is like diced tiny little cubes of cured meat. And okay. you saute them and they become very crispy. I would probably love it. And you put, th they're like cured pork. Yeah. And you put them on, I mean, anything you want. Yeah. It's like, it's like bacon bits, but yeah. like a different taste. They're <laughs> there's, so good. There's so, not yeah. a meat that I haven't come to love. Like, I mean, when I was like a six year old, I liked liver mush. So, okay. and I ate sardines as a two year old. So I just, yeah. there's, there's no meat I wouldn't try. Sardines are the best. <laughs> Such a di <laughs> divergence of conversation. <laughs> but well, look, look, veganism was kind of another piece of it our, was like, another. It was, a, it, was a, it was a movement toward animism, which I think the church has really tried to divest their congregants okay. from. Because okay. that's like, if you respect the animals and you believe everything has consciousness, <coughs> then you're going to kind of end up believing that it's not just humans that are the supreme beings okay, that are created by God. Take. Yeah, it's a, it's a whole thing. And like we're, I think we try to remove ourselves from any sort of like suffering, pain. We didn't want to cause it instead of taking like the responsibility of doing things like in an ethical and like sustainable way, you know? Yeah. I mean, at the time we were just like, did the best thing that we thought we knew. That makes sense. But I was nearly vegan for a year and found a lot of reward in that. Mm -hmm. And then it had a similar yeah kind of <laughs> moving through moving through it <laughs> moving i know through, yeah. it took me eight years oh, but i finally did move I through it land. which is yeah. fascinating because usually my moving through though actually in the public eye does look like a flip-flop but it is a moving through like i had to like keep going it's just like you're just swimming faster i'm swimming yeah at least <laughs> in the public but in within me it's just like mm -hmm. i it takes me years it took me eight years to move through veganism yeah yeah like that took me some time and then the christian thing like that took me a long time it's just 
when you said I when I quickly learned, I was like, maybe abruptly is the better word because That's it's like way to put it. I didn't quickly learn the things about like when I was like yeah. deconstructing my faith, whatever I but I did abruptly learn yeah. a few things and yeah. then that did speed things along. Yeah. But it was like my whole life of questioning things and like not understanding what prayer really means and like all these different things. It's like it was a slow burn until all of a sudden something really caught fire. That makes sense. You know. That makes a lot of sense, and I think that's kind of the motion of life is yeah. that you – you know how, like, when you, um, you're um you filling up – it's like a tipping point, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm, like, you're filling right. something up, and it's – the bucket is tipping, and it's tipping, right. and then mm-hmm. enough water gets in it, and suddenly everything under it's wet. Right. But, like, it wasn't until it fell over, you know? So true. So – Love an analogy. <laughs> I love analogy. And you, like, <laughs> write – you said you write question marks, like, on your hand to keep yeah, yourself questioning. lately I do. I love that. Is there, like, a reason why, like, you – you've been has like a thought come to your mind to be like question it or Uh, no it's more like sometimes in conversation with people like my partner in particular I forget to ask questions when I'm thinking that Mm. they mean something or Mm -hmm. they think something and instead of asking a clarifying question I run with whatever yeah I think it is they're saying Uh and I'm really trying to change that habit yeah and so the question marks remind me to stay in a posture of asking Mm. Mm mm-hmm instead of assuming because yeah. it's so easy to do and we all do it but yeah and yeah. I, I find it interesting too you wrote you wrote in that like you c- you can tend to lean towards like binary thinking yeah and I, that's another thing that we super have in common because it's like the, the people that i have found who say who claim or say that they tend to lean towards binary thinking end up being the people who are like the most nuanced people who are like so about moving through the things they don't like just marry in marry to like certain beliefs as they've like grown and evolved because it's something they've learned to yeah. do like over time because exactly. it was like their <clears throat> it was like their kryptonite their exactly in, in, including myself like yeah. it was my kryptonite to just hang on to something and be like this is the way and this is the, like again the vegan thing i did that for eight years yeah. and it's like once i've moved through so many of those binary lenses it's like now i'm like i fight really hard in every single day i'm just f- trying to find the nuance and then like the gray yeah. area almost yeah i relate to that i think that a lot of times people who are as you say like really open-minded and curious people have mm-hmm. become that way because they weren't that way right and they saw what that was like and right. they felt what that was like and they experienced it and it was like that's not what i want for my life yeah i don't like how this feels and yeah. uh, that might not be the case for everyone but i know that for me like growing up in a very high control religion um and i don't wouldn't call it a cult but it's cult adjacent for mm-hmm. sure it's a little mm-hmm. culty like where i was raised and a lot of people have that mm-hmm. experience yeah and i I just clung to whatever was told to me because I was so scared of the um, potential end of, you know, what would happen if I wasn't in line or obedient or in alignment Mm -hmm. with the beliefs. And so having lived that life, you know, and really been a person who clung to things for safety, I've just realized like that safety was a delusion. Mm. And so now that I know that, then when I feel like, yes, Yes, it's this. Uh-huh. And that makes me feel, I'm like, oh. Like, it's wait. another one of those. Pump, pump the brakes. Uh, yeah. Yep. I just and it's know like, better. I got to yeah. learn more. Yeah, but it's it's so, it's so soothing whenever you can start recognizing those times, though. Mm-hmm. Instead of just, like, finding out years down the road that you were, like, you had clung to something. It's like it's getting easier and easier. But we ha- it, was a, it was a hard-fought fight to get to the point where we are now where you can recognize it and you can – Write right. those question marks on your hand to <laughs> remind yourself to like ask the questions and to like stay curious because moving through the experiences of life, it's like that's what it's that's what it's about. Yeah. And, you know, you have I have kids. Mm. I was married before we got divorced, which is a whole other moving through that I mm. did. Mm. And um, my children are like asking me questions mm-hmm. about the nature of reality now because they're old enough to be wondering Mm -hmm. and that will i mean i just when i'm confronted with a question from them it's like i'm having to think how is my answer going to strike them right what are they going to take from it there's not i can't control what they take from it what they internalize but it definitely has me really determined to stay curious Mm -hmm. and help teach them to be that way because it's i can't again i can't control how they're going to be in the world sure they're going to have their struggles. They're going to have their mm-hmm. predispositions. I'm, You know, there's some of that I can't really help. But as much as I can, I really want to help them learn how to ask questions and how yeah. to stay curious about things because I think 
it will spare them a lot of heartache yeah. if they can move through yeah. the world in that posture. Um, but it's interesting because, you know, they go to a Catholic school. Oh, do they? Which is a long story. But yeah. I, uh, <laughs> so they're coming home with questions a lot. Yeah, yeah, I bet. And they're like sometimes really confused about yeah. how I answer those questions. But the way I look at it is like, well, for whatever imperfections this might cause for them, they are getting an early experience of yep. diversity of opinion. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's that's super important. Help them navigate the world. Yeah. Because that's how it's going to be everywhere they go. Because yeah. you've experienced you know. that the certainty is more harmful once it's broken than not getting the certainty yeah. in the beginning. Because yeah. like I feel like I feel like that's got to be something that you want to deliver to your kids. Yeah. It's yeah. like you want to be able to tell them like it's safe, it's okay. Yeah. There's yeah. something that you can believe that that's going to like be the foundation. Yeah. For how you act yeah. in the world and how you make friends and what you believe about your own future. But like yeah. giving them curiosity, I think is going to be better in yeah. the long run. So or just they even don't like that knowing that their teachers aren't perfect and don't right. know everything. Yeah. Just because right. your teacher told you something doesn't mean it's true. And you need to know that it's such a, yeah. that's such yeah. a good skill to have. Like that would have helped me so much. I would have, oh. I would have <laughs> just been, I think I, my whole nervous system would have just been like, Ooh, cool. Yeah. Good. Because yeah. I'm pretty sure I know better than them. So great. Thanks for, yeah. <laughs> thanks for like letting me believe that because that would have like, honestly, it just would have helped me out. I would have calmed down. There's a lot of my childhood where I feel like I was really just like <clears throat> tight because yeah. I, I would think something and I would question something, but I'm like, but how can I question this if, ev if the adults are right and everything they're telling me is like for my protection and all these different things. I'm like, I, I, I learned to not trust myself. Mm -hmm. And I think that was one of the like, biggest things I wish I could have had and that yeah. I would want to implement into future generations. That makes sense. It's such an undertaught thing, critical thinking mm -hmm. and like thinking for yourself. It's not really what our education system is designed to teach even outside of Christian education. Right. And so in my opinion, right. I don't, I don't feel that it's designed to teach that type yeah. of thinking because it's sort of dangerous thinking when people are <laughs> like yeah. if kids went to yeah. school and questioned their teachers all the time. What would happen? Right. Mayhem. So like yeah. it's, I get it. But at the same time, I'm sort of like, you know, you're more comfortable with the chaos of the universe this is what you said. So you're like, I don't know. I, I don't <laughs> think that my kids should believe everything I say either. Yeah, just because I said it. Sure. Exactly. So like raising cooperative children versus obedient children is very important to True. me because yeah. what I do think is helpful is to be a cooperative person. Mm -hmm. You can work with other people to achieve something such as getting to school on time, such as, you know, getting your homework done. Right. It's uh, that's a helpful life lesson. But saying do it because I said it right is teaching mm -hmm. something that's a principle that I'm like I don't really get behind anybody telling anybody that yeah. yeah you know and so I think a lot of systems are designed to control children because that's easier right than helping them grow up to be cooperative independently thinking people so that's we're trying to do it in the home because yeah. <laughs> that's like yeah. not being implemented in the outside world no, yeah not in public school either yeah, yeah. for sure yeah well I think we're like a probably about i don't even know yeah out, out of time <laughs> <laughs> quote unquote but if there's like is there anything else like you would like to share like maybe where people can find you like your yeah. music or any other like tidbits about curiosity or anything let's see well i'm on you know all the things mm -hmm. tiktok instagram i don't do much on tiktok but maybe i will one day um instagram <laughs> tiktok i have a website where you can kind of find all the information listed mm. there but then i also have a blog that i really love called the violet fields and it's a Substack cool. blog cool. and people can find that link at my website or you can just go to the violetfields.substack.com that's where i write more long form because i don't really do that on instagram anymore yeah um for obvious reasons yeah <laughs> and i but i love i love blogging still today that's so awesome that's something that i would love for people to check out if they're into that into that cool um other than that i mean When's your next single I, coming out? Uh, well, uh, <laughs> probably about a month from now oh, cool. or so. Nice. We've been like finishing songs as it's, yeah. It's been an interesting couple of years, like iterating and reiterating and refinishing and re reapproaching songs because I'm really carving out a new sound, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, in some ways anyway. And so, yeah, it'll be, it'll be out this fall okay. at some point. And I'm excited to release it because I think it's going to be, maybe the most familiar of the ones I've released so cool. far in terms of what it, what it feels like and what it talks about. Uh -huh. And I think I really have longed for diversity in this record of 
things that feel familiar mm. and things that feel new. And okay. um, so a f- familiar one is coming out and I'm, I'm really interested to see how people feel. About Yay. It. Okay, great. Yeah. Well, I'm excited for that. I'm Thank always like you. looking forward to your new music. Thanks, and Lauren. I like how about you? Yes. That's a, it's a good one. Thank you. Yeah. I really love that one too. Some people in my life that I know were like, this is ridiculous. I don't like it because huh. it's a little bit, um, it's a little bit of a journey. Yeah. A little experimental. Maybe you could sure. say, mm-hmm. um, and they're like, why can't it just settle into something? And I'm like, because that's not how life you're feels. Supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> We're moving through, baby. Yeah, you're like, supposed to feel the tension. That's how it is, you know? And so, yeah. like, I kind of made me feel good because I was like, oh, it communicates It's something. doing that. Yeah. 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 Look at you. It's not weird. It's you're not making that people weird. Question. Let's get real. I'm not Tom York. It's not that weird. But, um, yeah, cool. thank you, though. I appreciate it. Thanks of for having course. me. Of on course. Curio City. Yes. I'm happy to be a curious cutie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so excited. Well, thank you for being here. Yeah. And um, thank you everyone for listening. Uh, we love you guys. And until next time. Bye. bye.